All right, so here's my actual talk. Yesterday wasn't my actual talk, but this is my actual talk for OpenSUSE conference. Um, if we build it, will it come? Contributing beyond coding. Well, if you don't know who I am after yesterday's performance, that's me again. Um, I'm the director of technical and community marketing, hunter, ambassador, contributor, all that great stuff. But one of the things I do do at work is I market to communities, right? I want people to use SUSE's open source software, stuff like Kubeborden, K3S, RK2, even Rancher, and dare I might say Leap and Leap Micro, right? Because we can agree those are SUSE, right? And so my team, or one of my two teams, that's what we're focused on. And we put a big emphasis on getting people to adopt to that. But that's for the SUSE side. And I'm still a member here on the Open SUSE side, and I see a gap that we have um, with marketing. And I think that was the, the topic of conversation, I believe, yesterday in the afternoon. But I wanted to spell some things. This isn't me, um, but it, you know, everyone sees my last name and they think that, so I always put this disclaimer in there. But I want to talk to you guys about communities. Um, this isn't my first community. The, the first one I actually started was years ago in Cleveland. Um, it was a gaming community. If anyone's played Warhammer 40K, uh, no one. Thank you. You saved me because I was like, I was up here going like, oh, I hope do do they play this in Europe? I know they do in England, but I didn't have anyone to play with, so I started a club. I started a community around that. It, it could have been 30k back then. It was a while ago, but uh, that was my first, and I made a lot of mistakes with that community. But I was so passionate about playing this game. I wanted people to enjoy it, and when I had the opportunity to come to Susa, well, I took it. But when I did take this job. I have had to take a long, hard look about communities, how they interact, how people come, what are the focus. At work, my focus is the, con the consumer community, people who consume our products. I care about them, right? I want their user experience to be awesome. If you have a problem installing K3S, how can I make that better? What does it look like? Where on OpenSUSE, it's more on the contributor side, right? But there's some parallels, right? So we'll talk about that real quick. So what are these communities? Well, we're a group of like-minded individuals working together for a common goal, right? But then there's some other people who had the same thing. If you look back in any time, like in American history, European history, pioneers, explorers, they went off and they were going off and doing something very similar. They had a common goal. Sometimes fighting for survival, but they were settling somewhere else. They were charting new territories. So you're like, communities and pioneers? I don't get it. So in our early tech communities, we have everyone doing everything. Kind of like here. We focus, you know, you're a maintainer, you're helping with marketing, you're doing this, you're doing that. And everyone kind of does everything. And it doesn't necessarily bad, but Pioneers were kind of the same thing, right? Oh, 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 we're back. I got, I got, I got trigger happy there. Um, but the same thing with pioneers, right? Everyone's hunting, everyone's farming, basket weaving, leather working. I had to go look up what pioneers actually did back in the day. I was, I was embarrassed to tell you that. But everyone did everything, and everything basically got done. No one was specialized. Right? We didn't have like you know Jim over here, and he was the hunter, and he did all the hunting for everybody. We didn't; they they weren't like that. Everyone had to do everything on their own, and the output was just basic. Okay, but we eventually evolved from cities or villages, I guess, where everyone's doing everything, and some are better than others at certain things, right? But then we evolved into cities where everyone's not doing everything. Everyone's not focused on you know, having to be a package maintainer and be marketing and be this and be that, right? They were able to just, I don't want to do that. I can specialize. And here, even at OpenSUSE, there's, there's plenty of people I know personally who I said, hey, hey, Neil, you got to go and do social media for us. 
You, you. How about forum moderation? See? There's, but, there's, but there's some, I don't want to say sycophants out there who are just, you know, wanting to go, you know, die on the hill of moderating forums, but there might be. And there's certain people who are good at certain things that are, are not, or, you know, not good at others or don't want to do other things. And so the same thing happened. We went from, you know, villages in, I don't know what you call a pioneer settlement, I guess you would say, to cities. And people specialize. People became doctors and all that great stuff. And it's kind of time where we start looking at more of those specializations within our community here with OpenSUSE, right? And I'm still saying OpenSUSE, so no one's like, we're not talking name change today. But we need to start looking beyond that. I'm regretting putting animations in here. So if we look at everyone doing everything, right? Some are better than others, but everything basically got done in the tech community, right? Neil over there moderating the forums or doing social media or Gertrand holding down the bar or something. That is something that, you know, it's just basically getting done, but it's not specialized. And if we put some focus to it, can we evolve to everyone is not doing everything? Because those are certain, there's, you know, some people who are better at certain things, who want to modify forums or who want to be on social media. So my suggestion is, as we move this community forward, because we always have to progress or we die, is can we evolve from where everyone's kind of doing everything to looking for some specialization? You know, can we do that? Where you're not necessarily specializing in one type of package maintaining or nothing like that, but can we, can we evolve to that next point, right? So, I would say two and a half years ago, I set off and I wanted, to, I wanted to be part of this community and it was very difficult. Um, I was given roadblocks and I was told that you to contribute anything to be a member, you had to be a package maintainer two and a half years ago. Now I know that's changed, but does everyone else know it, it changed, right? Because some people today even believe that you still have to maintain some level of technical prowess in there before you can become a member. And it's a barrier that I think we should look at alleviating, and I know we have, but we haven't communicated it. So when we go for a call for all, we can say, hey, we need more package maintainers, we need more of these people, and we need those, maybe those other guys, maybe those social media people, maybe we, we can grab some of those. And when we say this, and we did it last year and we failed at it, it kind of comes down to just a call for package maintainers. And that's great, but it doesn't help with those ancillary things that our community needs, the social media, the, the whatever. We don't, we don't get it. We just say, hey, welcome. But maybe Doug can do all that work because he doesn't do anything all day. I mean, I know his manager, I know his manager, manager, and I mean, even his manager, manager, manager is here. He doesn't do it. He has, he has enough time to be on social media for OpenSUSE. And the reality is, that's not true. He's actually a very busy guy. So I asked it, well, we built this community, but are people coming? Are they? Are they? I'm asking you, Neil. I'll ask you. You're a board member. Tell me. What are our numbers? Not very high. Not very high, right? So what I'm, my suggestion is, and it's controversial, this is gonna be more controversial than what I talked about yesterday, is to call for non-maintainers, right? I say that we take a moment as a community and look for people who wanna do just social media. That's all they wanna do. They don't, they, they'll, they'll take what we have, they'll write up a post, they'll, they'll manage it, they'll respond to people, if the crap hits the fan, I almost swear, but I didn't. But if the crap hits the fan, they know who to call. They call Doug. And then forum mediation, right? Have you guys seen our forums lately? I don't know. How was the forums after yesterday's talk? Are they still, still quiet? Dead quiet, really? Wow, okay. But for, 
I, I know, but like the forums have, you know, there's times where they fire up and they get flamed up and we're all in there, but there's not a individuals that we, you know, want to go in there and do it, but we should, we should look for these people. And digital media, we have an awesome new logo. It was at the beginning of my slide deck, I believe. I like that logo, but we need more of it. We can't just rely on one person. All right. So, oh man, the animations. So when I prepared this talk, one of the things that one of my colleagues was worried about, it was, wouldn't we get a bunch of people we don't want? Like, wouldn't we get riffraff? Wouldn't we get people who, you know, have their own agenda? Well, I guess what, we have our own agendas. We're human, that's, that's acceptable. So the what about, there's a lot of these, right? What if it's all about me and, they're, and they just want to be an influencer and mooch off our community? I'm going to be honest with you, they won't. Because the person's not going to come and do that. We've done it on the Casusa side, where we have community members help with our socials. We have people in our Slack channel moderating. It happens just fine. So my final thoughts. We can't grow as a community with a single focus. Doug's great. I love Doug. But he can't do it all. He's a one-man army. And the of us that do help Doug out, we're all stretched thin. And so I, my call is, is we should really try to focus this next year on growing non-maintainers in our community to kind of put a focus on awareness and marketing. We had a marketing call or talk yesterday, like a little powwow session. Oh, that was great. And so my, my ask of the open source community is, you know, 2025 is to put a focus on our marketing and our awareness and really, you know, put our best foot forward with any potential changes that might be coming. That is my talk. I will answer any questions. Oh boy, Richard Brown's right there. First one in the back. Come on, bear dog. So I, I love the call. I support it. I mean, the, like the moderation example, we already have a mod team, but yeah, they need more people. Like, you know, yes. However, the, I think when you look at like why have we ended up where we are with this okay you know and, and like taking into account like what sunny was talking about earlier with like the hierarchy of needs right there's this like intrinsic feedback loop when you're a package maintainer you build the thing you want to run you get the thing you want to run that that's why this loop works that's why we're, we're where we are mm -hmm. when we talk about non-maintainers you know what are people gonna get out of like, like, what's the story for them when we do this call? You know, especially if you don't want the what about me influencers, because we have had this problem in the past back in 2011 when I was the guy on stage doing what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. And we had that problem. They did come to us then, because we're not a corporate company where our kind of funnel is paying money for us anyway. So we do have a kind of broader chance of getting folk in. But I think if you address it with a good story of, you know, yeah, what do you get out of it? That becomes, yeah, how we've, that becomes how that we turn this into a success, really. That's a, that's a great point. I wish I would have talked to you prior. I would have slid, I would have slid that in my deck. My fault. Any other questions? Is that Lubos? Yeah, no. It will be a friendly observation from um, the Open for Business when I actually figure out that there is a position that we don't have covered in the community, and I think it would be beneficial. I had similar experience. Oh, let me tell you about a position. I've heard that Rancher has a person who is actually looking over incoming submit requests from community, and you know that person is trying to help them to get a change in, right? Mm -hmm. And I had very similar experience with OpenQA when I was submitting new test suite. You know, and it was for, for me it was the first time. I always task people. I tried it myself, and I got instant help. Like, hey, here's here's your smoke smoke run of your change, and and so on and so on. I would not be able to do it myself within like that one day or whatever it took if I wouldn't have that support. But that's like very much exception across the repositories. Usually people, you know, kind of give you comments, feedback, but they do not try to help you make it in. And I think that would be also a very nice space for what That's a very good point. That's a very good point. And it's true, right? You guys have it like in mm -hmm. the yeah. One of the things that I get a lot is someone's fresh out of college, they have no marketing experience whatsoever. And they'll come to me and I'll get a Slack DM and they'll say, hey, 
how can I engage because I don't have experience? Now, I'm not saying we prey upon these people, that is not what I'm saying, but they're looking for experience and we're looking for help. And there's an opportunity for someone to truly grow, right? If you want to get into marketing and you want to put your first foot forward, saying that you helped, you know, some of these marketing assets that we need on the open suicide side is a great way to do it, right? And if someone wanted my, if they were doing that work and asked my letter of recommendation, I'd be like, yes, I'm in the open suicide community. This person has contributed a ton of marketing work. They're worth their salt because it's the, this thing where they want someone with experience, but you can't get experience because you don't have experience. So I did see that. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Oh, you guys have been really nice to me. No one threw a single bottle. I'm really disappointed. I, could, at least Neil. Could you address permissions? Because I think sometimes the community thinks there needs to be some sort of permissions given to. The permissions on what? I guess I would ask. Doug, permissions for what? Like access to things? Well, people like, getting involved, they tend to think they need to ask someone to do something when, oh, okay. when in fact, you know, they could simply participate. Yeah, I, I was, when it comes down to permissions, I always tell people ask for forgiveness versus asking for permission. So when I would, when in the communities that, the consumer community, I would just say, you know, try, push for it. So I've had people, hey, I wrote out a bunch of tweets you know, would you, would you, would, do you want to like use them? I'm like, yeah, sure, right? And so I just tell people, ask for forgiveness, don't ask for permission. And I think if we can kind of, you know, change that model where if someone's nervous, like, how do you know you're not going to be able to do something unless you try? And then just give them that feedback loop. Jeff, now I'm scared. Want... Like the last time you, no, you no, asked no, the question. No, 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 I'll, I'll be gentle, I'll be gentle. Okay, thank you. So I've been, you know, talking about the whole renaming thing for the past day, and I think it really doesn't exist independent of a change in how we actually govern the project. Okay. And I think if we start talking about permissions and things like that, it's easy to say contribute in a technical way and ask for forgiveness because, you know, there's really no fallout. But if you're contributing to the project in a marketing way, you're speaking for the project. Sure. And I can understand how a lot of people would really feel reluctant to do that. But if as part of this process that we may or may not be going through, start saying things like, hey, there's a marketing team. Mm -hmm. They're empowered to talk on behalf of the project. And, you know, you join that team and that permission is sure. granted. And there's no questions other than the, hey, can I join the team? And I think it sort of handles that permission and the enablement to actually do that in a way that doesn't really put somebody in the position where they feel like they could be speaking out of turn and won't know about it until afterwards. Got it. Um, I guess I, I'll go back to you know, my community team that I've worked for, with is Divi will tell you, um, Divi and Orland will, will tell you, no one's above an ass whooping. Um, Chris Rock said that. But no one's above a code review and no one's above a content review. And so a lot of times when things go out, we put blocks in place where it has to be reviewed, not only by someone internally make sure it's grammatically correct, but we send it back over to engineering and say, hey, did we get this one right? Are you sure? So this acts like a, a, a blocker for that, you know, to make sure that the content coming out is for that. But I do agree with you that having a, another organizational change to the structure of things might address some of the permissions because you are speaking on behalf of a product or project, excuse me. And, and just in, in, in terms of that, I mean, you're talking about a process that needs to exist as well. And correct. I don't know if that does. It exists at OpenSUSE in certain facets. We do have documentation for it. You have to find it, and you have to find the right person to help you find that. And I think we need to have advocates to be able to help navigate that. Because I always go to Doug and say, hey, where the hell this, is this? And then he has to kind of narrow it down, whereas having a better way where this is my marketing documents, this is what I got to do, and here are my process for it might be a little bit easier. Yeah, I mean, what you just described is sort of like having to go talk to Doug, having to know who to talk to is sort of the barrier that I think any new community member goes through. And, you know, marketing is one facet of it, but I think it's probably something we could improve in general. Mm -hmm. And we're making people more available. I've asked Orlin for my team to, you know, join the OpenSUSE community meetings, either on Thursday or Tuesdays, just to start learning the people. Because here at OpenSUSE, you have to know people to get anything done. Like, it just, it is what it is. It's culturally, it's not great, but it is good that you have to learn to meet other people. Here we go. 
I agree with most of what you're saying here, um, especially since I think one of the larger weaknesses we have is that we don't know what kind of voice we want to put out for the project when we're either social media or in moderation in forums or Reddit or whatever. Um, but that said, right, like, it, when it's been with one person for so long, adding a second person can drastically change how all this works. And I suspect a big part of why this is so underdeveloped is because it's just one person really doing most of it. Um, I don't really couple it with branding or any of the other things. I think just what tends to happen naturally as you have more people coming in is that it, a process builds itself out because people don't want to say the wrong thing normally. And like, there's already a starting point of Doug can review things and whatever. And so I think, I think it's more important to focus on building, for lack of a better phrase, a, a funnel of people to come in to support these aspects of the project. Mm -hmm. And, and then worry about all those other stuff as, as that builds out. Because, like, you don't want to put the cart before the horse, really. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Here comes Lou Bosch. Looks like all my friends are coming up and being Trying to up. be constructive, like, and support you. No, actually. it's okay. Uh, cool. Um, one idea. I don't feel like we have a really good system of recognition for non-code contributions. It's kind of hidden, right? Like, if you should submit package, you see your name in OBS and stuff. If you do translations, you may see people in changelog if you're lucky, and they're not really recognized for it. We don't really have two like Fedora badges that mm -hmm. would say, hey, this guy did like one million uh, translations. So that's one thing like we, that would probably have to happen in order to you know, lure people into these areas. And I'm supportive. I just don't have capacity or skills to make that happen. Maybe Jay. Uh, and the other thing is, how do we know if we are doing well or not well compared to previous year. We don't really have metrics. I don't. Maybe Dirk has something. Dirk. Like, are we? Like, yeah, like, so like some numbers. Like, do we know? Did we gain like 10 percent, or did we lose like 20 sure. percent overall uh, last year? We have the ability to measure SEO. We have the ability to measure our engagements on social media. For our non code as well. Yeah. Like media is one thing, but how about translations? I haven't seen numbers ever. Sure. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm advocating for more, up here advocating for more marketing, but right, if right. we need more people doing translations, then I mean, totally, I'm totally. all for it as well. But I'm just saying, if you want to know that we've improved, maybe we, we, we became a little bit more of the city, like, you know, we need to back it up by data that, we, that actually happened. That's just my point. Okay. Anyone else want to beat me up today? No, I'm just kidding. All right, well, thank you guys. I do appreciate it.